Hello, I'm Colette Sharbaugh from our Washington, D.C. office, and today's podcast is going to provide you with expert insights and practical advice on how your firm can get started with automation technology. It's an edited audio version of a LinkedIn Live from October 2020, which featured AICPA and SEMA's Penelope Johnson in conversation with two guests, Jotham Tai, the founder of automation company Gapify, and Leslie Mast, a CPA at Ray & Associates who's leading her firm's automation journey. The panel discussed key questions such as what automation is, why firms should embrace it, and the benefits and steps firms can take to get started. Let's get to that conversation now. So welcome to the Hear From Your Peers series. Today, we're going to share the latest trends in automation and RPA and steps your firm can take to begin your automation journey. I have with me today AICPA members, Jotham Tai and Leslie Mast, and experts in the automation field. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Uh, yeah, I can go ahead and start. This is uh, Jotham Tai. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Gapify, and Gapify is a cloud-based platform uh, for management accountants to to automate processes. So uh, our, our platform's feature is a bot named Alan, and some of the tasks that he's performing for companies uh, around the world today are accounting for accruals and bad debt reserves, and some of these things that we've learned uh, as we acquired our CPAs. And I'm Leslie Mast. I work for Rain Associates. We are a top 100 firm. I'm a project manager with the firm, which means I um, do some work with our mergers and uh, acquisition integration, and also now RPA. So we've been on this journey since the beginning of 2020, and somehow I'm now an expert. So I'm uh, excited to talk with you all today. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us and participating in this. So I wanted to start off with some, something. A lot of our members don't really understand what RPA is, right? Uh, RPA is kind of an example of automation. So can you guys tell us a little bit more about what's automation and what is RPA in relationship to automation? Uh, yeah, so that's a that's a big question. And, you know, really automation is kind of the overarching term that encompasses a lot of different uh, automation types and one of them being RPA. So uh, traditional RPA, and there are now many forms kind of emerging in the market. Uh, when you think about classic and traditional RPA, uh, you know, these are screen scraping type tools. So essentially recording a macro in your computer uh, and repeating that action uh, to accomplish the automation. Uh, you know, of course, there are dif different elements of RPA uh, or different features within RPA like OCR and you know, now even AI and machine learning capabilities. Uh, but you know, really, when you look at automation, it covers such a, a you know, wide range of different uh, automation types like RPA, uh, cloud, cloud as a platform, cloud as a with workflows. So, uh, yeah, I think it's it's definitely great that there are more options out there, uh, and you know, RPA is definitely one of the more popular ones today. And I would just add to that um, in the way that we are using um, RPA, it's basically replacing um, an action that a human is doing. So it's just a repetitive action. Um, such as um, pulling down reports from a website on a monthly basis. Um, now we have a robot that actually does that action instead of a human doing it. So um, and jo as um, was said, you know, it can be various different forms and um, it can, you can be as creative as you want to with it. Really, it's it, the opportunities are really um, far flung. So it's really exciting. So we also hear about bots, right? Bots and AI and in relationship to RPA. Can you tell me a little bit more about what the differences are, what the similarities are? Is RPA or a bot AI? Um, so RPA is, is one form of a bot, right? So you also have actually uh, traditional cloud applications like, uh, you know, CRMs even and ticketing solutions that have bots embedded in it. So I think to Leslie's kind of definition earlier, a bot is you know, effectively representing what a human would do in a system. Uh, and so you know, RPA is one form of bot. There are definitely many other types like it. Talk a little bit about the current environment, right? We have everybody in the entire world has been dealing with COVID in this pandemic. And tell us a little bit more. We have done a lot of research in regards to our membership uh, about how COVID has affected businesses and firms today, right? Can you tell us a little bit more about how COVID has affected your businesses or your clients and why that relates to automation? 
Uh, yeah, so from our perspective as a software provider, uh, we're definitely seeing an uptick in, in interest. Um, you know, COVID has definitely uh, demonstrated the importance of, of automation and, you know, in an environment where you're physically around people and able to, to hand over documents, uh, you know, it's in this type of world, that's harder to do, right? So digitization of, of transactions and records has, has come front and center for a lot of accounting teams. And, you know, so from our perspective, uh, you know, we now have accounting teams who are, you know, historically maybe, you know, not the first to dive in when it comes to automation, reach out to us proactively and, and just seeing what's out there. And, you know, certainly from, from my perspective as just an accounting, you know, professional and, and advocate, uh, it's really fun to talk about some of the, the options that are, you know, emerging in the scene today. So it's, it's been great. It's definitely kept us busy. Um, but I really do enjoy the fact that, you know, accountants are, are now embracing this technology. And you know, you're, you're talking to a guy, uh, when I first started my career in public accounting, I was auditing using a microfiche. Uh, <laughs> for, yeah, I don't know if everyone in the audience knows what that is, but I was looking at little films all right, and just, you know, kind of see that uh, move on to, to cloud and B2B, you know, SaaS, and then, you know, now bots and, you know, everyone kind of uh, embracing the technology has been really fantastic to see. As, as terrible as COVID has been in a lot of regards, um, I think it's actually been a, an excellent trigger for us to help us actually move towards using the technology that we have available. So at the beginning of 2020, our firm was um, taking some initiatives in, in lean projects. So Lean Six Sigma, we use that for our tax processing. And it, when we went on lockdown, it forced us to follow those procedures and processes that we had in place. And it forced us to use the technology that we've had in place, but not everybody was ready to jump into and actually utilize. So, um, you know, like, uh, like I said, it, it's been a really bad for a lot of reasons, but it's been really good in other, in other ways because of um, us forcing um, us to actually use the, the technology that we have in place now. And that, Add, adding to that now is that RPA solution that we're we're building into the process too. So it's been very good actually. We've heard that from so many members that really they have just uh, said that uh, technology adoption or acceler has accelerated like tenfold since the pandemic. And so digital transformation is a huge topic. Where does RPA fall in with that? I think it's really just one of the tools. Um, that we can use. I mean, our firm was already using um, other digital um, technology solutions. You know, we, our, our tax practice, um, we use a software that we scan the client's documents and the technology reads the, the, the 1040 tax data and starts the tax return for us. So we were already using some of those um, digital solutions, but um, all of that definitely has been accelerated. What are you hearing from the uh, business the business side or your client side, Jotham? Yeah, yeah. So I see RPA is just another you know tool in the toolbox, right? So you know what's what's important to recognize, uh, especially for us as a software provider partnering with businesses to to you know elevate their automation environment, is that there are many types of automations, there are many types of processes. So you know, not every single automation or maybe RPA solution is the best fit for a certain process. Uh, so RPA is certainly great for high volume processing, you know, like invoice vouchering uh, and, you know, data entry type work. Uh, but RPA would not be the best, for example, on maybe some of the more analytical and, you know, big data algorithm type tasks. And, you know, there's some standalone cloud applications that are better at it. So, uh, you know, again, RPA is just you know, one of many choices to choose from. And it was always never, it was not like this all the time. So, uh, you know, it's a great time to be. Uh, in the accounting profession because now you're equipped you're fully equipped with all these these options leslie uh yeah i mean it, it is great to just be able to add to that um suite of of, of um, processes and and digital items that we have at our disposal so i'm i'm excited to see what we continue to do with rpa and and how we can integrate that into our existing processes so tell us a little bit more, Leslie, about why your firm adopted that and what are the benefits? Like, what did you guys see when you were starting this journey? Uh, why did you decide to go with automation? And, and just to, to let our, you know, uh, the folks that are watching here today, why they should be interested or learn more about RPA. 
Yeah, um, our firm really just wanted to um, be more innovative and, and really we're starting to focus more on innovation and how we can um, drive some of that change um, in at least our firm and hopefully at some point the industry as well. Um, we did some research calls on different uh, vendors that were in the RPA world just to um, kind of evaluate what the options are and um, see what the best solution um, would be for us. And um, as we started our research, we found that the vendors um, offered two solutions for us, the, the ones that we evaluated. One was that they would train us, um, some of our staff, to um, actually do the developing and the coding and the programming, right? And then um, there was another option where we basically give them our project and tell them what process we want them to automate. And uh, basically, de depending on what um, option we went to, that definitely had an impact on our budget and, and what price we were willing to spend. Um, but after giving it some you know, long thought, uh, this is a long-term investment for us. And so we thought, you know what, let's just go ahead and train our people. And we went for that first option of, of um, training our own people as developers and um, really just grabbed a hold of it and ran with it. So we, we're doing all the developing ourselves right now. Um, it has been very challenging. I am not a programmer by nature. <laughs> so it has really been um, kind of fighting those natural tendencies and, and, and trying to learn logic and how you tell something to do something, uh, how do you tell those robots to work. So um, that's been challenging. Um, we don't have anybody full time in this uh, RPA world yet. Um, I spend about a third of my time here and all of our developers have other jobs to do too. So um, that has been a challenge of getting just the time and resources available to focus on that more. Um, I think if we were 100% focused on RPA, we definitely would be further ahead. But I'm still happy with the progress that we've met, so um, that we've been able to, to get to so far this year. So it's like I said, it's been an exciting journey for us. Sounds like it. So we have a good question that's come in from a viewer. Uh, what's an example of an RPA transaction? So um, I can say uh, first that um, like one of our um, RPA bots actually um, will log into a banking website. So you think of an, a national bank. Um, we will log into that website and we will, um, this program now to actually um, get a PDF of a client's um, bank statements every month. And so it will grab that statement and then it will um, save it to a, a drive on our server so that the, the human then can pick it up and actually start to work with it then. Um, and so we, we've been able to actually replicate that several different times for several different clients. So that um, is a bot that has um, already paid for itself. Um, and so that's just a, an easy example of just the, the process of going to a website is not that time consuming, but it does take, you know, 10, 15 minutes to get there and, and click on all the things and, and download it. So um, that's been a, a good uh, RPA example for us. And Jotham, what are you hearing from your clients? Like what are the uh, top few transactions that RPA has managed for your clients? Uh, they're very similar in nature to, to what Leslie described. So, you know, going into some kind of application or a website, uh, extracting data and moving that data into something else. Uh, so, you know, again, when it comes to, to RPA, what, what we see more is usage of it in accounts payable or accounts receivable, uh, you know, less so much in SEC reporting, although you can probably uh, you know, train a bot to, to do some of those things as well. Um, but, you know, because it's still uh, early uh, and, and, you know, there's still a good number of early adopters out there, you know, certainly tackling kind of more operational uh, tasks in nature are, are you know, the best places to start for RPA. And, you know, as teams get more comfortable and as you build an RPA engineer team around uh, your team, then you can definitely have it have it do much more than that beyond uh, just AP invoicing, AP invoice processing and, you know, AR vouchering. Okay. We have another question that has come in from a viewer. Are you seeing gains in turning certain processes to bots? Um, yeah, absolutely. So uh, as a software provider, it's important for us uh, to you know, understand what the value is for each of our customers. And so we have a pretty open line of communication with CFOs and, and chief accounting officers who uh, quantify, because we are accountants, 
uh, we, we like to quantify the value of, of these uh, bots. So, you know, I can speak for, for our automation at Gapify. Uh, so we you know, can help save, um, you know, 3x the cost of uh, the, our, our solution by, you know, just running autonomous uh, workflows uh, for, for a very specific part of an accounts receivable process. Um, you know, obviously the benefits uh, vary from, from process and solution. Uh, but, you know, it, it's not just from the standpoint of hours and, you know, hard labor costs, uh, but it's also just performance. So one of our customers, uh, CFO, really loves automation and in general in our product because uh, he's been able to increase his cash collection by 60% with just the use of a bot because a bot can can do more, right? So a bot can reach out to a customer uh, when an invoice is just issued that we don't have to wait until, you know, that, that customer is late on their payment to follow up. If you have a bot, why not have the bot, you know, knock itself out and, and collect uh, and get, uh, you know, statuses right away. So, you know, examples like that are just really fun to see in the industry. And we're hearing more and more of it, you know, beyond Gapify and our solution and the value that we provide. It's certainly a lot of fun uh, to see other solutions provide that same benefit to, to accounting teams. Absolutely. So I wanted to address, Leslie, I thought your your automation journey, and you had addressed this a little earlier, um, but when I spoke to you before, it was so interesting to find out that your company embraced R RPA. And, and so I'm certain that you did a ton of research on how to get this started. Can you tell us and some of the viewers here, how do you get started in, if you're interested in, in going the automation journey route? Well, I think uh, the, the um, listeners here are doing... Uh, the first step in that journey, right? Just kind of listening to either a webcast or a podcast on automation and understanding what it can even mean. I know most accountants probably don't even really understand what RPA means or what it can do because it just, can just take so many different forms. So um, I think just understanding, um, you know, what resources are out there. Um, the AICPA actually, um, Penelope, you'll get to this, but um, there are a lot of great resources through that website and um, just talking to some peers. I know we first learned about it at um, when we were doing in-person conferences, of course, um, you know, that's been all the rage at some of the um, conferences. So don't be afraid to talk to those vendors. It's not a scary adventure, but um, it is time consuming and um, we're hoping to really see the payoffs for that. So I, I would say just educate yourself first and then, um, you know, reach out to folks like us who can give you some advice along the way. Um, do those research calls to find out um, what has worked for other firms and how um, they've made their um, journey as well. Um, you know, we're not the, the first ones to this. So um, there's, you know, have been other folks that have gone through this journey ahead of us and we, we leaned on them for advice too. So those are, those are some steps I would suggest. Thank you, Leslie. We have a viewer comment that has come in. Um, can you address this? So the bots are taking our jobs, right? And that yeah. is a common thing that the people are very, very concerned about. Can you address that? Sure. Um, and we've been very careful to um, frame this per um, appropriately in our firm because it can seem very threatening that um, we're now taking uh, a, a robot to do your job. Um, we're taking away those tasks that are not really valuable. They're, they're things that need to be done to do the job. So like in my previous example about, um, you know, pulling those bank statements, that is a necessary job of, of reconciling our client's cash. Okay. So we have to go get those bank statements to do that job. But that particular task is not a really valuable part of it. You know, the value is actually doing the reconciliation and producing helpful reports for the client. So it, think about it. We're not replacing the, the good stuff. We're taking away the bad stuff, the, the, the time wasters, the time sucks. And that is really um, making you and perhaps your administrative team available for other jobs, other more valuable jobs. And so, um, yes, that definitely is a concern. But we, we frame it as though we're, we're taking away all that the, the time sucks and really um, replacing that with um, more time for you to spend on more valuable work. That really makes sense. So what skills do CPAs need to leverage automation? Good question. Um, I'll start, I guess, um, just kind of an open mind um, to start thinking about what's even possible. Um, you don't necessarily need to be a programmer, um, depending on what 
uh, avenue you choose for your RPA journey, um, you just need to understand your process. And, and actually starting with a lean process and an established process um, is, the, is a good way to start. Um, but just having an open mind for those innovative solutions, I think, would be something I would suggest. Thank you so much. Um, one question that we get constantly, uh, we have a lot of small and medium sized firms out there that are just trying to keep up with, you know, all that's going on with the pandemic and the PPP and all CARES Act and such. Is robotic process automation only for medium and large firms? We get a lot of questions about small and medium sized firms and whether they're able to take advantage of that. Sure. I, I don't think it's only for large firms. I mean, uh, of course, larger firms have more resources to throw at it, right? So, uh, you know, they may get there faster or may be able to move uh, more quickly to that journey. But I really think that there's an opportunity for small firms even to, to you know, dip their toes into this territory and figure out um, what might be available for them. I think there is value in, in smaller firms, even maybe not the sole practitioner, right? I mean, I think that might be a stretch, but, um, you know, some of the smaller firms that, you know, top 400s or something might even be, um, you know, in that, in that uh, market for. I would add to that. And there is now a new wave of low cost, Mm -hmm. uh, low code type RPA solutions that I think would work well for smaller firms, uh, even a, a sole proprietor. So uh, they are now out there. Um, and I, I think that's been one of the biggest waves I know in the Silicon Valley in terms of VC investments, you know, low code robotics. Uh, so I think there are many options out there for you know, all sizes. Great. Thank you so much for your time. I, I'm going to wrap it up and kind of uh, summarize what we've done, but uh, your time is so valuable. I certainly appreciate that you've spent it with us talking more about automation. I, I love this uh, this area because it's something, this technology is something that you can implement tomorrow and see a benefit, right? So um, Leslie and Jotham's uh, just to summarize some of their tips, do your homework, do your research. So always start small. Don't try to uh, take a, an entire process and create a bot for that. Just start with a, a portion of a process. Always articulate the value, right? Quantify that to make sure that you're ensuring success for your firm and from business and create new value. So get rid of those mundane tasks that you're doing that add no value to your future uh, roadmap and create new value like data analytics, right? Understanding the data and being able to, to uh, put the value back into your business. So thank you again for your time. Um, we do have some resources that I wanted to share with you in case you're interested in moving forward. Uh, we do have a digital mindset pack with free CPE and uh, it has an automation uh, module in there so you can learn more from that. We have interactive ebook blogs and podcasts and we also have a RPA fundamentals for accounting and finance professionals certificate available on our website aicpa.org so thank you very much for your time thank you thank you thanks for listening to this episode of beyond disruption brought to you by the association of international certified professional accountants learn more about today's topic at aicpa-cima.com forward slash disruption this podcast is designed to provide illustrative information with respect to the subject matter covered and does not represent an official opinion or position of the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants or any of its subsidiaries or affiliates. It is provided with the understanding that the association, its affiliates, and subsidiaries are not engaged in rendering legal, accounting, or other professional services. If such advice or expert assistance is required, the services of a competent professional person should be sought. The association, its subsidiaries and affiliates make no representations, warranties, or guarantees as to and assume no responsibility for the content or application of the material contained herein and expressly disclaim all liability for such damages arising out of the use of, reference to, or reliance on such material.